Hey y'all, it's J70 with Talk To Me, J70. So I just woke up, so don't mind my roughness, but um, I woke up and I sat for a second and then I, of course, I checked my phone. So I had to check all my social media, check all my text messages and then go through my emails or whatever. So it's always a different energy with each one of them. Like I always get something different out of each one of them, each one of them. But today with Instagram, I received a DM from this young lady who has, um, she's came to one of my events before where I spoke and she said this to me. She started going to therapy and she said, my therapist told me I need to work on my self-compassion. So that's point one, self-compassion. Then she said to me, I swear your energy is like goals. It's like you have this glow. It's really magnetic. So I wanted to explain this self-compassion i wanted to explain how i got to where i am in here and in here um with self-compassion and it does everything that you do is going to start with self with me everything that i did within this last year started with myself nobody else could help me it had to start with me i had to initiate it i'm an aries so i initiate like i had to initiate this thing in myself to make it even to make it peaceful for me to be able to live in my thoughts and live in here and just be able to be one with myself, I had to initiate this change. But with, with self-compassion, um, I wanted to share how I started my therapy journey, what caused me to go to my therapy journey, and how I had to hold myself accountable to even make that first step. And last March, this is April, okay. So yeah, last March, um, I found out I was pregnant. And for the first time in my life, I did not care what nobody had to say around me. And that means I was 26. So yeah, yeah. So when I was 26, I found out I was pregnant. And like I said, I didn't care what my mom had to say, my dad had to say, my grandparents didn't. Have. I shut out all noise around me. Like what I thought they were gonna say. Most I didn't even tell most of them, but for me, I just knew I had to make a decision for myself. For the first time in my life, I had to just look myself in the mirror, figure out what I wanted and make that decision for myself and not care about what other people, all the outside noise. I had to block out the outside noise and just deal with Jasmine. So I found out I was pregnant and I chose to abort. I chose to abort for many reasons. I chose to abort because I didn't want um, to, if I would have kept that child, the child's father, um, we're super cool. That that's one. So that's that's the twist with this story. We're actually super cool. But I knew that that to me it would have been the easy way out. Like if I would have kept that child, he had so much money. He had he had everything going for himself, and it was like I was in a transitional period of my life to where as though I'm like nah, I can't really. I, I'm not gonna be able to do this and do it happy. I wouldn't be able to keep that child and be happy with it or with myself, right? So I chose to abort for um, many reasons. Plus, I just thought I wasn't ready. Like, I'm like, yo, you're in the peak of your career. Like, you cannot, no, like, no, this is not the way you want to do this. So I chose to end my pregnancy in April, which is, now it's been a year, which is super duper cool. So um, in the midst of me ending my pregnancy and choosing to end my pregnancy after I ended it, I could not sleep well at night. My sleep, I kept going back to the last 10 seconds of my abortion. So my thoughts, every time I would try to go to sleep, my thoughts, I couldn't control up here. That was my first time ever experiencing not being able to quiet my own damn mind. So I'm like, oh no, I gotta reach out for help. Like this is something that I can see how people can go crazy in here. If you can't, you're trying to sleep and you can't quiet the this, like it's no way like so I said you know what I'm going to reach out for a therapist I chose this um therapy place out in Owings Mills Maryland and the one that I wanted they were backed up like it was a waiting list to get into this therapy place so I'm like okay so I called I left my information and I let it go like I let it go like I, I let it go and I started doing the self the work that I knew that I had to do inside myself in order for me to even go to therapy and be open and honest about whatever I was experiencing when I met my therapist right so that's when I started doing my walks and the videos the videos was birthed out of that abortion a lot of things a lot of changes was birthed out of me aborting that pregnancy so then probably like a month later um the therapist assistant she called me and she was like hey Jasmine are you still looking for a therapist 
I said, oh yeah. And she was like, okay, cool. We're going to put you on our books. So I went to therapy and um, my first session was an intake session where they ask you all these questions just to figure out who will be the best therapist for you and what kind of help you truly need. And my first intake, I broke down. I broke down because I needed my therapy. I broke down because my feelings was all over the place. But then I just knew like I made the best decision for me. And even going to therapy was a bad, like it was the best decision for me. Now my grandmother, my grandma, it's something about therapy that I feel like older black people, it's like a bad stigma with it. Like you don't need to go to therapy. You just need to pray. And I'm like, grandma, I'm praying that, praying that, Prayer is not working for this. Like, I don't think you have experienced this, so I don't know how you deal with it or whatever, but praying wasn't working to, for me to be able to control my damn thoughts. I had to go and talk to someone and get it out. And my therapist was super duper dope. The person who did my intake ended up being my therapist. My therapist, And it's been super duper cool. But that's how I got to self-compassion for myself. Like, I couldn't beat myself up. I couldn't, the choice that I made was best for me. I, I wouldn't push my choice on anyone else, but I had to learn self-compassion in that moment. Like, yo, you can't beat yourself up. You did what was best for you. It doesn't matter what no one else says around you. Like you have to make choices in this season of your life to do what's best for you. If you've never done it, welcome to a new beginning. Like making that choice helped me. It just helped me move different, walk different, think different. I, I did, I in order to have compassion for yourself, it's going to bless you to have compassion for other people. Now I don't get so worked up and I, I really do look at the root cause of the why somebody is making me upset. Like people really can't make me that upset anymore because I have compassion for them. So now my brain goes, instead of, instead of getting super mad with them, I'll just look at it like, damn, they're doing this because of this. This is what's causing this. That's how my brain goes now. It's no more like, Oh, she tried to play me. Oh, he tried to play me. No, that's just who you are. And I have nothing to do with it. It doesn't affect me personally. And that's how I started to get that self-compassion for myself. And that's how I have it for other people. I talk about self-love a lot as well. Like I had to increase my self-love. How the hell can I say I love someone else and not love myself? It all go, It all starts with self. You have to do the work in yourself. And when she said my energy she used that word radiant and this is the third person that told me something about being radiant this week and I'm like what the fuck like I, I need to look this word up to really understand the meaning because I don't know what they see it's just me being me like it's it's nothing fake it's nothing you know like it's just really who I am and it's it's the new person that I'm becoming. Like, I've probably always had a glow as a child, but I know that this glow is way stronger than that glow because that glow was probably, that was just what I was being taught. This is like birthed out of me. Like, this this, this new way of thinking, this new perspective, this new eyesight, like, yo, it's, it's a blessing and it's a gift. Like, I call it some, it's a luxury. That's what I call it to my therapist. I'm like, yo, this stuff that I'm living is like luxury. Like everyone won't experience this. Everybody can get a BMW or a Mercedes or this or that. But this thing that I'm working on, like everybody won't experience this because you have to get to the core as to why you are the way you are. And you have to start making things, decisions that are important to you and not care what nobody else has to say. You have to have that tunnel vision and block out all outside noise because I'm telling you, like, that outside noise will get you caught up. Like, I, at certain points, I'll leave my phone out here and then go into the room and go to sleep. Like, I don't even want my phone to be nowhere near me. I don't want no outside noise to interfere, like, peace. Like, nah. <laughs> and this video is probably all over the place, but I really wanted to help her understand how I got to have self-compassion. I didn't always have it. Like, I had to work on that. I had to go through something and it had to be forced out of me. Like, that was pushed out of me. Talk to me, J70.